Hi, my name is Sarthak Bharadwaj and welcome again to Letter of Law. In this week's episode, I wish to revisit the Keshwananda Bharati case and share a story with you that I think has been forgotten. The Keshwananda Bharati case is famous for a lot of reasons. Not only did it lay down the basic structure doctrine, that is the unamendable core of the constitution, which cannot be altered by the parliament, but it is also the longest case in the history of the Indian uh, Supreme Court. It went on for 66 days and it was heard by the largest constitutional bench ever comprised, that of 13 judges. But all of these facts are quite well known in the public. For the Keshwananda Bharati case is perhaps the only case which is taught not just to law students, but to also high school political science students. But there are many gripping stories behind the Keshwananda Bharati case, which have either not been told or are closeted. In this context, reading T.R. and Dharujina's account of the Keshwananda Bharati case becomes extremely interesting and important. And Dharujina talks about how there were multiple political overtones surrounding this case. He talks about how the government brought in several judges, which it thought would rule in its favor. He also talks about how several judges assumed their position on the bench with preconceived notions about the case. Now, T.R. and Dharujana, in this case, assisted the legendary H.M. Sirvai on behalf of the state of Kerala. While doing that, he maintained a day-to-day -day diary of the events that transpired in court. The book draws on those memories. Therefore, it is anecdotal and replete with interesting and fun stories. In this episode, I wish to bring to you one such story. The story of heightened tension between the legendary constitutional expert and lawyer H.M. Sirivai and the then Attorney General, Nirande. While both of them had argued the case on the same side, that is the government of India, in the initial days of the arguments, it appeared as though both of them were not even on the same side. Why is that? Let us try to find out. Very early on, the then law minister, H.R. Gokhale, had met with H.M. Sirvai and asked him to be the principal counsel for the government of India in this case. It was felt that Nirande, due to his successive defeats in cases like Goloknath and bank nationalization, was perhaps not up to the challenge. Now, Sirvai agreed, but on one vexatious condition. His condition was that he will have the right to address the Supreme Court first. Now, the Attorney General, being the highest law officer of the country, has traditionally address the court first and this request by Sirvai effectively rendered the office of the attorney general subordinate to him. But H.R. Gokhale was so keen on roping in Sirvai that he was prepared to ask Nirande to not appear at all in case he did not forego his right to first audience. Now, uh, Sirvai, being a constitutional expert, suggested a way around this imbroglio. He recommended being briefed on behalf of the state of Kerala, which was the first respondent in the case. And then Nirande, being the counsel for Union of India, which was respondent number two, could follow up. But still, this left the attorney general with the right to pre-audience owing to his constitutional status. As the date of oral arguments to commence uh, 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 came closer, this news of Sirvai's unprecedented request reached far and wide. And several senior members of the bar urged the Attorney General to not give in to these arm-twisting measures and to uphold the dignity of the office of the Attorney General. Therefore, Nirande was adamant on arguing first in the Supreme Court and not to give this right up. 
And finally, when the oral arguments began on 31st October in 1972, Nirande took his usual seat, usual first seat in the central court and H.M. Sirvai sat beside him. Andhyarujana recalls that there were no pleasantries exchanged between the two and an eerie silence engulfed the entire courtroom. This silence was even felt by uh, the judges on the bench. Now, the acrimony between both of these lawyers soon accentuated in courtroom proceedings. Nani Palkiwala was arguing on behalf of the petitioners. So, Sirvai rose on two occasions to counter Palkiwala on some legal points. On both these occasions, Nirande rose and said that he did not agree with the view taken by Sirvai. This position was exploited later by Palkiwala, who thanked the Attorney General for taking a responsible stand. The bitterness between the Attorney General and H.M. Sirvai seemed to have reached an impasse and there seemed to be no way forward. So much so that Sirvai was prepared to forego the case and resume his appearance in other matters. Thankfully, due to a timely intervention by Fali Nariman, and H.R. Gokhale, um, Sirvai was persuaded to stay on and he was assured that certain measures were being taken to placate uh, the matter. And then suddenly, Andhyarujana writes, on one occasion, um, Andhyarujana was called by Nirande and asked a very simple question. Nirande asked Andhyarujana, as if he was not even aware of what was happening, whether Sirvai really wanted to argue the matter first. And Andhyarujana told him that he did. On doing that, um, Nirande very solemnly and in his deep, heavy voice declared, then let him. When this news reached Sirvai, naturally um, the bitterness between the two of them lessened. And uh, shortly thereafter, Fali Nariman hosted both Nirande and Sirvai in his chambers for a cup of tea. And later, uh, Sirvai mentioned that that conversation was a jolly chat between the two of them. With their relationships reconciled, both these stalwarts managed to put a formidable, though unsuccessful, defense for the unfettered power of the parliament to amend the constitution. However, not everyone was happy with the stand taken by Nirande. Certain senior members of the bar, such as CK Daftari, voiced their a disappointment by claiming that Nirande had lowered the status of the office of the Attorney General. However, at the very least, the friendship between these two eminent lawyers was preserved. And this is how um, their relationships were pre prevented from um, becoming more foul and sour. Now, if you enjoyed watching this video, I request you to kindly consider subscribing to the channel and share the video with someone you think might enjoy it. That is it from Letter of Law for this week and I hope to see you next week too. Thanks. Bye.